Hi, this is Omar Sultan again from the CMO Data Center Solutions team. I'm back here with Brian again. Welcome back, Brian. Thanks. So this time we're going to dig a little bit deeper into one of the cooler aspects of the UCS manager, uh, service profiles. Yep. So Brian, why don't you show us uh, a little bit about the wonder of service profiles. Yeah, so service profiles are, are kind of the most important construct around um, UCS manager. And it's really how we've implemented our stateless computing concept. And that, that's kind of a fancy word by saying we give you more flexibility and um, kind of do some automation around server provisioning. and. Um, the reason we call it a service profile is that it does a bunch of things to not only the uh, the servers but also to some of the network elements. And you can see here um, uh, inside the UCS Manager GUI, I'm selected on the server tab, and I already have a bunch of predefined service profiles here. And I'm going to step you through some of the details of, of one of these in a minute. Um, you can create these manually. You can also have a bunch of templates. So I have uh, two types of templates I, I kind of pre-created here, which is if I wanted, I'm going to roll out a bunch more ESX hosts because I'm uh, you know, building more ESX clusters. I could easily stamp out more service profiles that have a very predefined format. And that reduces the number of, uh, you know, these, all these little small nuances that creep into the data center, uh, configuration drift and things like that sometimes cause problems, you know, sure. availability outages. This will ensure a lot of nice consistency across the service profiles. Um, we also have, and uh, you see it here on, on this tab, but also on, on some of the other tabs as well, the concept of uh, a policy and pool driven environment. So um, what we mean by that is you're going to go in and um, the server admin in this case, in this tab, will go in and create some predefined policies about, <clears throat> excuse me, about how you want to boot the system. What, what do you want to put into the, uh, the BIOS for the server to boot off of? You might have simple things like, hey, I'm always going to do a local boot. You might have more sophisticated things that are um, going to boot a Diag type server or something like that sure. um, to run against the system or um, things for sand boot and things like that. That'd be a, a, an example of how you capture some policies. Um, another example is these things of firmware packages. This is a, a really nice, um, nice capability of the system that as part of a service profile, you can push new firmware onto a, an actual blade as part of the process of associating service profile. Okay. And what that means is, as you could kind of see by my example here at the top, I have two very different types of workloads here are my service profiles. Sure. Inside one unified computing system, I might be running some ESX hosts as well as some Oracle Rack hosts. Um, might also be running SQL Server and a bunch of Windows things. And those, those uh, workloads may require different firmware versions and different firmware settings. And uh, you know we're going towards this approach where you're sharing the infrastructure and being able to kind of flexibly deploy a blade in our environment into any one of those clusters. You know you have a let's say an HA blade, uh, you know spare blade that you might, if you have a failure of any one of your kind of running workloads, you would want to easily provision that uh, piece of hardware into any one of these clusters. And the ability to push firmware um, onto the um, onto the blade and onto the adapters is a, is a is a really nice capability. So this sounds. Um, not only more flexible, it sounds like it's more granular and, and greater in scope than maybe customers are used to before where maybe they've seen dynamic network addressing or, or SAN addressing, but yep. we're, we're, now we're digging into firmware and things like that. Yeah, you know, the, the concept, and I think a lot of people have started with, you know, trying to play with addresses and identity, and that's a good first step, but it, you really have to do it deep and wide to really make it useful in a production context, right? Because sure. if you get 80% of the way there, you know, in a data center environment, that's not good enough. Data centers are a very rigorous place. You know, you, all the 10 steps of the process have to be done. Um, and if uh, in some cases, you know, the workloads can't, can't use the same version of BIOS, the same version of firmware, you know, you can't really realize the, the benefit, I would say. Absolutely. Um, and kind of same concept here around pools, except, um, that you would go in and create pools of identity. So one of the things, if you go and create a bunch of different, um, let me just scroll back down here, um, a bunch of different um, information about um, UUIDs and things like that in the system, these are um, server identities. Sure. You could create a whole block of identities and then as part of the process of creating new service profiles, you could just pull from the pool. Okay. It saves you from having to, um, you know, manually go in and, and add some of this information. And we do this for a lot of the different types of addresses in the environment, sure. UUIDs, worldwide names, MAC addresses, all that type of stuff is what you would find on the other tabs there, these, uh, these LAN and SAN tabs up here. Cool, and you associate pools with the templates. So. Yeah, so you say, um, you can actually probably see in, in one of these, uh, let's drill into this ESX host here. 
So th this host one is um, is created. You can actually see the UUID. It actually came from a pool. Okay. So instead of going in and typing in some string, you've created a, you know a set pool of UUIDs, and you can uh, tell tell where it's come from. Okay, cool. And uh, you definitely have some uh, you know. <clears throat> excuse me, actions on it to associate this um, This service profile is actually not associated with a, uh, a piece of hardware. You can see this other this other service profile is already assigned to a given blade. It's actually up and running. Okay. If you wanted to do it for another service profile, you would go in and obviously um, change the association and you, you get basically are going to get a list. You can pull from a server pool or you can go in and, uh, you know, choose individual servers in the environment. You get a, a drop down of all the hardware in the environment. And uh, let me show you a couple of the other things that um, are used inside a service profile. So I've already described the concept of policies to you. Where you show these policies before, that's where you're defining the policy. So the teams are kind of creating their best practices or codifying their best practices. Sure. You actually consume those policies by actually um, in a service profile, when you go to create a service profile, you've come in and you've selected which policy you want to use. So when you create a service profile, you're not actually going in and choosing the configuration you want per se. You're just saying, I want this policy that's already been predefined. So in some senses, we would expect, you know, that there might, in larger data centers, there might be one group of people, you know, more senior folks. They might be the ones who create the policies, where other folks who maybe just came into the environment might be the ones who consume the policies. <clears throat> and they don't have to know as many of the details. And uh, this is also helpful when you talk about cross-role. So there's also policies in here about network policies. A server person might want to consume a network policy. They probably don't want to create one. Sure. They'll leave that to their uh, their network uh, network colleagues. And I'm sure the network folks don't want them <laughs> creating policies. Yeah, either. it's uh, you know role specialization is a good thing. You know, data centers are pr pretty complex places. Sure. Um, so here you can you can see an example of a of a firmware a host firmware package that I, I showed you the policy down there before that had. Uh, you know, some BIOS versions and stuff in it. Okay. Um, when this service profile gets pushed on to an individual blade, these those firmware, they're essentially stored in the network on the UCS 6100, will be pushed down and actually applied onto the blade automatically. Oh, very cool. Um, you can also see outside of the policies, we have, um, you know, NICs and HBAs that are um, essentially defined in the service profile. And when you go and associate it with a with a piece of hardware, we'll go in and apply the appropriate address as well as appropriate um, VLANs and other things like quality of service elements and stuff. So you're kind of defining what your, your bare metal NIC looks like sure. and um, how you want that NIC connected to the network, which VLANs and, and kind of quality of service metrics you might actually want on it. Okay. Same concept. Um, for HBAs and and you know boot order is pretty self-explanatory. Where do you want to where do you want the boot boot target to be from? Um, and uh, just say if, if you're actually associated with the server details, you would see some information about what server you're associated with. If I were to go, let's uh, pick one that's actually associated. I'll go over here. You can see that this uh, service profile is actually associated with this uh, top left blade in this chassis here. Okay. And you can start to see some basic things about the model number. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do a KVM into the system, you know, to see the actual running operating system, et cetera, or, you know, power cycle the system, to reboot it or something like that, you would all do that from this, from this console. That looks pretty comprehensive. So, I mean, this seems like it's pretty compre you know, comprehensive in terms of the profile. You could really take a given hard blade and have two wildly different configurations, one after the other. Yeah, you know, we, we really spent a lot of time trying to make this um, provisioning process, one, easy to consume, but also make it powerful and, and rich enough that you can really use it in production data centers for varying types of workloads. You know, infrastructure consolidation is a, is a big part of the game these days. You know, server consolidation is a piece of it. We would expect um, the unified computing system to, to kind of help reduce some of the the overall capex that people have because they can reprovision the system much more quickly and easily than they could have in the past. Cool. And uh, I'm assuming if a customer, you know, if there were other applications out there or a customer had uh, done their own coding, you know, they could do the provisioning through another application, right, using the XML API. An, app, an application, for example, could reach down and reprovision, you know, adding another node to address a performance issue. Or those Ab kind of absolutely. So in this example, you can see here I have, uh, you know, I have three nodes in my ESX cluster or three nodes in my rack cluster. Yep. You might, if you, uh, you know, continue to hit that create a VM button in, in, in Virtual Center, <laughs> yes. you know, after some point in time, you actually just need more hardware in the cluster. Yep. You'd come in here and create a service profile and you could make sure that it's going to show up on the right VLANs. 
have a known kind of worldwide name so it could access the shared LUN that all the uh, you know, VMFS data is on, et cetera, and then you could spread the VMs out. And you can obviously do that manually, but yeah, we, we're excited to have a nice XML API and have a bunch of ISV partners to work with, as well as customers who will use it themselves to kind of automatically push these service profiles in based on all types of business roles they might have that are very specific to their, their use of the unified computing system. Cool. Looks very cool. Thanks, Brian. Thanks.